frightening, isn't it? From all appearances, this community could be in Iowa, California, or Tennessee. It looks like an American town. As American as apple pie and ice cream. As a matter of fact, you can find apple pie here and ice cream too. But appearances are deceptive. This is not an American town. It isn't even in the United States. However, it may be assumed that such a town does exist, shrouded in secrecy and protected by utmost security, deep behind the Iron Curtain. Russia seems to have plenty of barbed wire to enslave its own people, to keep freedom out. You might call this a college town, communist style, as part of a long-range plan to destroy our free way of life. These young communists are studying the economic, political, and religious institutions that are the very heartbeat of America. They're studying you, the way you talk and think. They're becoming acquainted with supermarkets, baseball games, and hot dogs, with all the precious freedoms which Americans so casually enjoy. Speak English, comrade. Remember, that is about the only freedom you do not have in this town. It's American town. Americans, they have too many freedoms. That is another thing you must remember, comrade. For one day it will be your mission to destroy those bourgeois capitalist freedoms. The courses here in this strangest of all schools, espionage as a science. Propaganda as an art. Sabotage as a business. This nameless American city, deep in the vastness of the Soviet Union, it stands as a symbol of Russian treachery, of long-range communist conspiracy. This town may appear to be an accurate likeness of a typical American community, but it's a fraud. It isn't free. Now, Let's take a look at a genuine American town and a genuine American. I want you to meet Jerry Donovan. He's proud of his country, but prone to take his liberties for granted. Well, he's aware that someone must assume responsibility for those liberties, for our free way of life. Yet, when there's a job to be done, Jerry, like so many Americans, is apt to ask, why me? Well, the answer to that question affects Freedom, and you. This is Jerry's house, and that's Jerry's little boy, Jimmy. He's the fastest runner in his class. But even champion runners sometimes get balled out by their coaches. This is coach Helen Donovan. Oh, incidentally, she's Jimmy's mother. That hand, you see, belongs to Linda Donovan, girl mechanic and oldest daughter of the Donovan clan. This young man who looks like a lovesick St. Bernard is Bill Martin, Linda's boyfriend. Bill wants to be a lawyer, but sooner or later, he'll have to face the fact that he'll never be able to out-talk Linda. This dignified young lady is Sally Donovan, escorting Jerry Donovan as he leaves for work. She has a special interest in Jerry. He's her father. The Donovans, happy, healthy, contented, living in a land they're proud of. It's a nice picture. But there's one thing Morning, wrong with Say, Eddie, how's that new reel working? Hi, George. How goes it? Morning, Bertha. What'd you say? Morning, Bertha. Uh, uh, Bertha, that's what I call my lathe. It's sort of a nickname. All right, sweetheart, the vacation is over. Now we go to work. Hey, be careful, boy. Don't want anything to happen to that bowling hand. Hey, Pete, I was pretty good last night, wasn't I? Well, not bad. Not bad? 
See the way I picked off that last five ten spare, a little hook, and zoom right on the button, huh? Yeah, well, too bad it was a practice game. You better save a little of that luck for the league championship. Luck, you say? Say, Pete, the old master is not going to lose his touch. Okay, master, I'll sleep easy. <laughs> See you later. Hey, Jerry, you going to make the meeting tonight? No, I can't. Well, it sounds pretty important. Management's getting together with our union committee to iron out some differences. You ought to show. Not a chance. The in-laws are in town. Helen wants me to stay home. I swap jokes with the old boy. Anything to keep her happy, you know how that is. Sure, buddy. I'm a married man myself, remember? See ya. So long, Pete. Well, Bertha, the dance is over. Let's get back to work. I think it's just wonderful of the Armed Forces Committee to let us use this strip today. Glad to do it. Well, here he comes. How do you do, Sergeant? Look for yourself. Break any records? Take a look for yourself. 103.92. Hey. Freddy, you can spread the word. We're ready for the Salt Lake Flats. That's sensational. Terrific. You're a cinch in those road races. You can also tell them that I owe it all to my mechanic. Jump in here. We're going for a ride. Thank you. See you, Freddy. Bye. See you. in two weeks, right? Right. Then what about the road races? Honey, is that all you're worried about is the road races? Hello. I'm Bill Martin. I'd like to see Major Barnett. Just a moment. Major Barnett's a friend of my father's. Come in, please. Thanks again. Major Barnett, I'm Bill Martin, Owen Martin's son. Well, Bill, this is a surprise. Let's see, the last time I saw you, you were playing shortstop for Little League. <laughs> yeah, it has been a good while, hasn't it? Oh, this is Linda Donovan, Major. How do you do, sir? A pleasure, Miss Donovan. What can I do for you, Bill? A few weeks ago, I went down and took my physical, and then I was notified that I'd been classified 1A. Then I got my order to report for duty. Well, congratulations. Thank you, sir. What I was wondering was, well, is there any way that I might get a postponement? Well, now, since you aren't under my command, this will have to be unofficial. However, there are extenuating circumstances. Health, hardship. There's a reason for your requesting a postponement fall into either of these categories? Uh, not exactly, sir. There's some road races coming up in three weeks, and I wanted to enter them. And that's the only reason why you want your orders postponed? No, sir, there's something else. Linda and I, we want to get married, Major. I'm glad you remember to mention that little point. I'm glad you remember to mention that little point. Oh, yeah. Well, does that mean that I'll get the postponement? I'm afraid not. Oh, well, I thought if a, a guy was getting married, then he'd get a deferment of something. Getting married is a big responsibility, Bill. But entering the service is also a responsibility. Now, here in America, the bulk of our military power is made up of citizen soldiers, like you. People serving their country where and when they're required. Now, for our armed forces to function effectively, each individual fighting man must be able to assume the responsibility of the uniform. That's his privilege, as well as his duty. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't get married. But if you really feel you're ready for marriage, two weeks should be as good as two years. It's up to you, both of you, to make the decision. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for your time, Major. Good luck, Bill. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Major, about those road races. I guess we didn't figure out breaking any records anyway. We'll see you. 
Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, that wraps it up. You've earned a rest, Bertha. Hey, Jerry, you're awfully good to that lady. Oh, she's good to me. I'm good to her. <laughs> Go on. Have a nice weekend. Same to you. Sorry you can't make it tonight, Jerry. Yes, see, Pete. Yeah. Are we going to see you at the meeting tonight? Uh, hello, Mr. Evans. No, I'm afraid you're going to have to carry on without me. My in-laws are in town. You know how that is. Uh, of course, everything's in pretty good hands. Well, that's not the point, Jerry. You missed our last meeting with the Union Committee. There's going to be some pretty important items on the agenda tonight. You ought to be there. Uh, say, aren't you forgetting something? You represent company management, remember? Now, what do you care whether I show or not? Well, I do care, Jerry. We're always willing to iron out any difficulties with the unions, but uh, we want to do it on a representative basis. Otherwise, all our efforts are meaningless. You know that. Yeah. Well, excuse me, Mr. Evans.
to admit that coffee over strawberries is a rather strange combination. <laughs> is there something on your mind? How can you tell? Hmm? Want to break up the huddle? Now, Bill, this is a play you've really got to look out for. All right, fellas. Half time. Put up. Linda? Well? Bill and I have given serious consideration to the situation, taking into account our ages and... Oh, Daddy, Mother, we want to get married. I'm sorry to spring it on you so suddenly, Mother. I suppose it came as an awful surprise. But... <laughs> really, sweetheart. Congratulations, Bill, and I might add, you're a very lucky young man. Thank you. Daddy? Well, if everybody's through kissing each other, I think there are a few things we ought to iron out. Now, don't get me wrong. Bill, I like you, you know. I'm not against the marriage. Matter of fact, I think it'd be a fine idea. In four or five years. In four or five years? And I know it sounds like four or five centuries to you, but believe me, if you're really in love, it'll be worth the wait. You're both too young to get married right now. But, Daddy, I'm 17. 17? Well, I can remember just a few years ago when you knocked out Johnny Reynolds' front tooth because he called you a sissy. You, Bill, you're going into the Army very soon. That means Linda will be left alone, possibly with a child to care for. Is that the way you want to start your marriage? I think there's only one thing that's important when two people get married, and that's whether or not they love each other. Yeah, you would think that. Let me tell you something, son. There's a lot more to marriage than just love. Financial security and companionship. And the fun of planning your life together. And that's why you're not ready for marriage yet, either of you. Mr. Donovan, I'm going to marry your daughter. And I'm not going to wait four or five years to do it. Thanks for dinner. I'll talk to you later. Good night, Bill. Bill! Linda. Honey, now let them go. Oh, come on. Don't you remember how young we were when we got married? Helen, no, it's got nothing to do with it. Things were different then. Times change. Nowadays, the young kids just think about television and road races. Is that what they really think life is? Just one great big road race with a trophy for the winner? Oh, honey, it's not as though they're going to run away tonight. You'll have a chance to talk to them, maybe even make them see your side of it. Uh -huh. Now you agree with me. You no, see, now no, you agree I with me. No, I didn't say I agreed with you. Jerry, but I admit there may be something in what you say, yes. Well, why didn't you tell it to them instead of letting me battle it out all alone, like, like Custer oh, and the little big so horn? excited. But who's excited? I'm not excited. You are excited, I... yes. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm going up to bed right now. Bed at 8.30? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to drive up to the lake with George Lawson first thing in the morning. We've got a very important engagement with some freshwater trout. Now, Jerry, you're not going to forget about Jim. Hmm? The father-son banquet tomorrow night. Forget it? After I went to all the trouble of writing that speech? Not a chance. Where 
is everybody? Helen, come here. I've got something to show you. These are beautiful, not one under two pounds. And I caught my lip. What's the matter? I told you never to hold dinner for me when I'm out there. What's your dinner, Jerry? But it wasn't dinner. I meant to be back in time for that banquet. I forgot, I just forgot. I believe you. But I can't excuse you. That's up to him. Hey, Trooper. Hey, Trooper Donovan, wake up. It's time to go yet, Bob? Jimmy, uh, the banquet's over. It's too late now. It's all my fault. That's okay, Pop. I didn't really count on going anyway. You didn't? Why not? Because we didn't go to the one last year. We never go anywhere together. Something always goofs us up. I guess I'd better go to bed. with you, right? Okay. Sorry. Trooper Donovan, I have my speech right here. I'm going to save it for next year's banquet. Is that a deal? Sure, Bob. Jimmy? No hard feelings? Sure, Bob. No hard feelings. Oh boy. Chief Machinist made you as Naval Reserve report for two weeks active duty, wouldn't you? Well, know honey, it? you knew they were coming when you put in. Well, it seemed like a good idea two months ago, but now I wish they'd let somebody else do the job. Any particular reason why? Just comes at a bad time, that's all. Oh. Well, the kids will be getting out of school. The bowling team has a chance to win the league championship. Now then there's this trouble with Bill and Linda, I don't know. I'll get it. Hello, Bill. Hi, Mr. Donovan. I came by to see Linda. Well, that's fine. Come in. Come on in. Come on in. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Good evening. Hello, Bill. I'll tell Linda you're here. Thanks, honey. Smoke? Thanks. I just got something that might be of interest to you. What? <laughs> Memento from Uncle Sam. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, the way it looks to me, Bill, that kind of puts us in the same boat. Let's just forget that I'm a few years older than you. The fact is, we both face the same problem. What problem? Going on active duty. Of course, in your case, it's a little bit different. You're younger, unmarried. Aha. Uh -huh. But I intend to get married, Mr. Donovan. That's what I'd like to talk to you about, Bill. See how it is with me? Just two weeks, and I'm going to have to worry about Helen and the kids for the time I'm away. But if a man doesn't have a family to think about when he's in the service, he can start with a clean slate as soon as he gets out. Sounds to me like you resent having to go. I don't. And I'm not going to wait five years to marry your daughter. Thanks for the smoke. Mm. Bye. Good night, Dad. We won't be late. Good night. I wish I knew what to do to pound some sense into these kids' heads. Oh, Jerry, I think these kids have more sense than you give them credit for. I'm going to turn in. Good night, beautiful. Don't you want something to eat? No, honey, I had a sandwich on the way home. Uh, Jerry, sweet dreams. Picture of an American retiring for the night. 
going to bed in comfort, without worries or problems. Well, almost without problems. Linda and Bill may mean momentary worry, but in America, there's always tomorrow, with its bright promise. And problems will work out. Somehow, things always work out. Now, in a few minutes, Jerry Donovan, father, fisherman, machinist, and loyal American, will be asleep. But tonight, instead of the sweet dreams his wife wished him, let's give Jerry a nightmare, a real red nightmare. Now, you remember that Russian town we saw earlier? The town that looked like it belonged in Kansas or Ohio or Vermont? Let's lift that town out of the Soviet Union. Let's superimpose it on Jerry's hometown. And those precious freedoms Jerry so complacently accepts. Let's see how many freedoms Jerry might lose if suddenly he had to live under communist domination. Now, you may not like what you're about to see, but it could happen to you if everybody took responsibilities as lightly as Jerry Donovan. Charlie, will you hurry up with the coffee? All right, all right. I've only got one pair of hands. Jerry's a little confused. Things seem different now, and they should, because freedom has suddenly vanished. Fortunately for Jerry, this is just a nightmare, the result of a troubled conscience. But there are some people, like Jerry, who have to learn it the hard way. And this is the hard way. Permit number? Operator, I don't have a permit. I just want to call my house. I want to talk to my wife. No personal calls are allowed without a permit from the commissar. You will get off the line, please. Uh, operator. Congratulations, comrades. Now that you become acquainted with the enlightened communist system, in contrast to the outdated capitalistic way of life, you are now prepared for the next step of your indoctrination, which will be most difficult. When the moral fiber of the United States weakens and the economy collapses under the pressure of competitive coexistence, you will assume control. You will move into every phase of American political and economic life it will be your responsibility, comrades, to purge the minds of the reactionary Americans so that they will welcome the enlightened Soviet system and conform without resistance to the dictatorship of the proletariat. Thanks to you and your dedicated comrades, the whole world will soon bow to the hammer and sickle. But remember, we must be alert for the slightest sign of weakening of the bourgeois capitalists, you will find that duplicity, deceit, treachery, and inconsistency can be effective weapons against these gullible Americans. Again, my congratulations, comrades. Continue the good work.
say, could you tell me what... Yes, comrade. Nothing. Nothing, never mind. Thank God, thank God you're all right. I have something to do. Gee, Helen, I'm sorry I'm late. Something strange happened. Something very strange. I was standing in the plaza... Um, never mind that. But you are disturbing the children. Their meals are to be consumed without interruption. I don't blame you for being sore. But I'll make it up to you. Tomorrow night, we'll have an early dinner at the steakhouse. Then we'll take the kids to the drive-in movie. That would be quite impossible. Tomorrow night, you've been selected to address the parent-teachers committee. The what? <laughs> oh, no, there must be some mistake. They don't want me. What would I talk about? How Jimmy's team lost the Little League Championship last year? The subject of your address has already been selected for you. The theme will be how the new communistic life benefits children. Oh, wait a minute. What if I don't want to talk about that? What if I don't want to talk at all? I would advise you not to object. Recently, the party learned that you were on the debate team while in school. They were very disturbed that you kept this fact a secret from them. Experienced speakers are needed by the party. They'll make very good use of you. That's right, and next week you will make another speech to the young pioneers. Oh, really? And what am I to say? Or does the party have that figured out, too? Your topic will be communist youth and industry. You will tell about the success of the school reform plan. And the record yield of corn harvested on the children's farm. Why is it that everybody knows what I'm supposed to say except me? The speech was delivered here yesterday, and the children took it to school with them. They told us that if we learned it, we would understand the communist purpose. Oh, they did, did they? Well, I just happen to be your father. If you don't mind listening for a minute, there are a few facts I'd like to explain to you. Sergeant, check the kitchen. You look in the back. I'll be upstairs. Hey! What is this? Where do you think you're going? We have no time for explanations. Already we are 15 minutes behind schedule. I don't care who sent your why. You're not going to take another step until I see your warrant. Warrant? We need no warrant. As a member of the Young Communist League, your daughter has volunteered for farm work. She's to be transported immediately. The truck is waiting outside. Wait a minute. Let me get something straight. You say my daughter volunteered? That is correct. Here's the signature. Requesting transport to the People's Collective. Signature on that piece of paper is false. And everything you've said is a lie because my daughter would never leave here of her own free will. Sergeant! Hey, you've got no right to be in this house. I'm going to give you just 10 seconds to get out of here. Daddy? It's true, Daddy. I did volunteer for farm work. Linda, why? The party convinced me that I should free myself of the lingering bourgeois influence of family life. I am ready. Honey. Do not interfere. It is for my own good. And Comrade Donovan, do not think that your deviationist remarks shall be overlooked. They will be reported to the proper authorities. What's this quarter business? That's today's work, comrade. Hello, Pete. Having a little trouble, Bertha doesn't seem to be in a working mood. The lights must be fixed immediately. You have a quarter to fulfill. If you fail, we'll all be held responsible. I'm doing the best I can, quarter or no quarter. I can't do anything till I get this fixed. Well, then I advise you work during your lunch hour. The quarter must be met, and Comrade Commissar isn't interested in excuses. Honey, I overslept. The kids get off to Sunday school all right? Well, it's a beautiful day. 
take it back from Sunday school. Why don't we all pile into the car and go over? Hey, what is this? Someone going on a trip? You could call it a trip. Actually, the children are going away to a state school. Now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I don't know what's happened to you or what they've done to change you, but you're not going to send these kids away. Oh, she's not sending us away. It was our idea. We learned in school that home life does not encourage the growth of the collective character which the party wishes to develop in its young people. It's your fault. You should have spent more time training us to think along party lines. Instead, you yourself have been guilty of deviationism and bourgeois sentimentalism. As a member of the Young Pioneers, it will be my duty to report you. You better listen to me, all of you. I don't want to hear any more talk about state schools and party lines and collective character and deviationism. This is going to be a family again, and I know just where to start. You two are going to Sunday school, and you're going right now. Mommy, tell her! No use to argue. Mom! This Mom. time, I'm going to overrule the party. Come on. Dad! They've been poisoning you kids with those lies long enough. Now you're really going to find out what the truth is all about. We tried to tell you, Dad, but you wouldn't listen. There is no more Sunday school. Please take us home now, Daddy. Everybody's looking at us. It's a mistake. Somebody made a big mistake. Come on, we're gonna get this straightened out right now. Come on. Come on inside. Come on, Jimmy. What's happened? What have they done? Keep your voice down, comrade. Otherwise, I shall have to report you. Who put these displays in here? This is a house of worship. You are mistaken. This is the People's Museum. And I am warning you once more. This place is a lie. Everything about it is false. These models? This. This was not invented by a Russian. The man's name was Bell Alexander Graham Bell. And he was an American. Get that, comrade. Everything on this table is as phony as the town. The rotten system you call communism. following crimes against the state, subversion, deviationism, and treason. You have been given this opportunity to make a public confession of your treacherous violation. Just a minute. This is supposed to be a trial. Who says I'm guilty of anything? Where's your proof? The state needs no proof. It is up to you to prove your innocence. But how can I prove my innocence if I don't know what I'm accused of? Subversion against whom? Deviationism from what? Treason against what government? The prisoner has been given his opportunity to confess. I ask now that he be sentenced. Now, wait a minute. You, you've got to listen to me. They say I'm guilty of crimes against the state, but it's the state that committed the crimes. Why, they broke into my home without a warrant. Armed soldiers. They took away my daughter. They desecrated a house of worship placed religious objects with, with phony displays, and they called it a museum. They even tried to turn my own kids against me. My wife. Uh, Helen, you were there. You know that what I'm saying is true. Tell them. Mrs. Donovan? This document contains your signed statement. It proves that your husband tried to turn your children against the communist state. Is the statement true? Yes. Lieutenant Martin. Comrade Kuchesnov. Comrade Malenko. These documents contain your signed statements. They prove that Comrade Donovan is guilty of deviationism and treason. I want you to tell the court if these statements are correct, I will ask you each in turn. Comrade Kuchesnov, 
Yes, the statement is true. Comrade Malenko, true. Lieutenant, the statement's true. There's no need to continue this trial. The evidence against the prisoner is overwhelming. I ask now that he be sentenced immediately. I want to see those statements. And maybe I'll have a few words to say in my own defense. The prisoner will step back into the box. There is no need to examine the statements of the witnesses. The prisoner stands condemned by his own words. He has challenged the supreme authority of the state. He has questioned its practices and its decisions. And by these actions, he has proved himself to be a dangerous enemy to the proletariat. And he must be treated as such, as an ugly remnant of a diseased bourgeois class. He must be eradicated before the contagion can spread. Comrade Donovan, you are hereby sentenced to be shot. The time and place to be decided by the court. Shot. Well, I suppose that's the only sentence you could give me. Because there's no place in the communist world for a man who believes that all men were born free. And the right to search for the truth. That's what you're really afraid of, isn't it? The truth. In a communist society, the state is the author of truth. And it will tolerate no questioning of its authority to define what is true. That's where you make your mistake. Because communism isn't a system of government. Communism is a system for producing robots, slaves, who talk and think exactly the way you want them to. If they deviate from that pattern even a little bit, you destroy them and start all over again. You communists. You rattle off a lot of fancy words, don't you? Like imperialism and deviationism and proletariat. But there's one word you don't use. There's one word you fear. And that word is freedom. You just can't wait for the day when we believe your phony promises and lies, can you? And we let down our guard and forget to protect our freedoms. Well, let me tell you something, mister. You've got a long wait. Because we believe in freedom. A brainwashed slave is no match for a free man in any kind of a fight. And don't you forget it. You hear me? Don't you ever forget it. Donovan, do you know why you're here? I can guess. Do you have any last requests? Yes. We really need these. I don't think I'll be going anywhere. Nevertheless, I'm afraid they're necessary. Comrade Donovan, you've been convicted of crimes against the supreme communist government. Being an enemy of the state, you must be liquidated. I have been commissioned to carry out your sentence. What, no firing squad? I'm afraid not. However, as a last favor from the government, you are hereby granted one final chance to confess your crimes. If you wish, a recorder will be summoned to take down your statement. I have a statement to make, all right, but you can deliver it. You just tell your government that someday its own people are going to get wise to it. Someday there's going to be enough holes in that iron curtain that all of your people will be able to escape to freedom. You'll never be able to build a wall strong enough to hold them. One of my own countrymen once said, you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Believe me, you communists can't keep fooling the entire world. You can't even keep fooling your own people. Because the news about communism is getting around. That it's only another word for slavery. Don't worry, Jerry. 
that bullet will never reach you. Because it's time to bring you back from your red nightmare. What you have seen is not entirely fiction. Greater brutality is taking place right now in countries which have been swallowed up by the communist machine. We know that Jerry is waking. Let's see if his dream has impressed him. Polished off the eggs. Would you mind cereal? Cereal will be fine, just fine. I'll get it just a minute. Good morning. kids don't have this car in shape by now, I don't think you ever will. Well, uh, if you'd like to talk some more about that marriage business, you better catch me while I'm in a good mood. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> We've got something to tell you. Now, uh, you haven't run off. <laughs> no, that we haven't done. But we have decided to wait. Not five years, mind you. But at least I've finished my hitch in the service. <laughs> uh, that's a wise decision, Bill. Yes, indeed. I think that's a very wise decision. <laughs> How about some breakfast? Good idea. Let's go. Jerry knows now, so he'll never forget it. Responsibilities are a privilege, an inherent American right, the strength of our nation. The bright hopes of a free world are founded on the dedication of individual Americans, people who guarantee freedom by standing ready to fight against aggression, against the communist attempts at world enslavement. Freedom is not hereditary. It must be earned. Freedom has a price, and its price is vigilance. Its price is responsibility, not only of government, but of every citizen who salutes our flag. Those who serve as a part of our nation's armed might, and those who have served, they guarantee freedom's continued existence. Freedom. No single word in all the languages of mankind has come to mean so much. Freedom to enjoy the simple things of life in the circle of family and friends. Freedom to work at a vocation of our choosing. To vote in open election for the candidate we believe best qualified. To come, to go as we please. Freedom to own property to enjoy the priceless heritage of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To marry and raise a family with belief in the dignity of the human spirit. To study in the field of our choice. To speak our beliefs. To worship God. These freedoms that spell America. They represent a way of life that has become the farthest advancement of mankind on this planet. The world community is always threatened, as it is at this very minute, by predatory nations poised to destroy, to devastate, to enslave the world's people. To prevent communism from consuming the entire free world, there stands but one man. That man is you, the individual, the American. You and millions more like you. As our military might guards the continued existence of freedom and peace under God, our strength and shield is you, 
the civilian who respects his responsibilities, and the American in uniform. You, the individual American soldier, and the United States Army, a force for freedom safeguarding our way of life. ships and planes, watching and guarding the world's seaways. strong and ready to preserve the world's peace. those who keep them in the sky as a mighty persuasion for peace. Our soldiers and sailors, airmen and marines, are skilled in the use of modern and efficient weapons, fired with imagination to adventure into the future. The chains of communist slavery never will close on the free world, because there stands that one man. That man is you.